Okay, the first step when you get in the car is to, number one, make sure the car is parked on a level surface. Don't park on a hill or anything because we will be moving the shifter in and out of gear. So to start with, we're just going to put it in neutral and we're going to pull the emergency brake up completely so the car doesn't move. And we're going to go ahead and uh, first step is to take off the factory shift knob. Now the C6s vary from 2005 when they first came out up to present with the boot design. From 05 to 07, they had just a boot with a little elastic uh, rim on it that just snapped around the base of the shift knob. But 08, they came out with this little chrome plastic collar right here. And a lot of people couldn't understand and got frustrated. They didn't know how to remove the shift knob because it doesn't unscrew. So what you have to do if you have an 08 or newer Corvette C6 is you actually have to grab the base of that plastic collar and you want to turn it one quarter turn counterclockwise and as you turn it you'll pull it down and you'll expose the mounting screw on the side here it's right there okay this is a five millimeter uh, flathead screw but GM does not make the same head from year to year we have found that on several vehicles they vary from a Torx head to a Phillips screwdriver head to actually just a standard Allen key head so make sure that you get down and look very closely at what head you have and don't just assume based on this install video that it's a Torx head if it's a Phillip or you could round it off and that would be very bad. You'd have a really hard time getting the shift knob off. So in this particular model, the 2012, it uses a Torx head and it actually is a 20, size 20 Torx head. So that's the Torx wrench we have. You want to make sure that you put a lot of pressure on the passenger side of the knob so that when you're turning it, you push in very hard so that you don't strip the head out and you want to put it in there very tightly and you want to actually push very hard in while you're turning so that you don't strip that head because it's very easy to do so and even when you start turning it you're going to notice it's going to have resistance because General Motors puts blue Loctite on that thread so once you get it turning it should come out pretty easily and make sure that you grab that screw and set it aside somewhere where you'll know where it is because you reuse the screw if you're going to reuse the stock shift knob. Once that screws out, the knob simply pulls right off. Okay, the next step is we're going to remove the center glove box lid and for that we're going to use a 15 Torx and you have one, two, three, four screw heads that hold it onto this little piano hinge. Be very careful on some of the earlier year C6s this is just a very cheap particle board and you can easily strip out the threads on this lid when you go to attach it by over tightening it and as you can see it was just barely finger tight inside these screws you just take them all out you can just go ahead and place them right in the center glove box area because you're not removing this part of the console and when you get the last two you want to actually hold on to the glove box lid so that you support it, especially when you go to loosen the final one or else you'll strip that hole out. Okay, once it's out, just be very careful not to scratch it and just lay it aside. And then you can go ahead and lower the piano hinge. Okay, the next step is to remove the two screws that hold the front of the console to the car and by doing that first you want to just take your fingernail or you can use a small uh, little trim tool just be careful not to scratch the dash you just pop these little plugs out and you'll notice there's two Torx head screws now also varying from year to year on the C5's these could either be Torx head screws or actually hex head screws that use a seven millimeter hex and a lot of times the ones in the front are Torx the two over here behind the emergency brake are hex and we've actually found from year to year they could either all be Torx heads or all be hex heads. So just look at them and just use the appropriate tool. But these two use the 15 Torx. So we're going to go ahead and remove those two. And again, you can just lay these right in the center console. Once these are removed, we'll move to the emergency brake. 
and the emergency brake base of the boot is actually held in with two clips here and here. So if you know approximately where they are, about halfway in between the front of the e-brake and the front of the console, about there, and then right here at about the base are where the two clips are. So you want to pull up on here and support right there and just kind of pull up and it'll pop out. And then you want to come over here and you want to just kind of pull up, reach up in there and pull up on that. You don't want to yank on one edge or the other edge because you could tear the boot, crack the plastic, or actually bend the little clip. So you just pull that up and actually pull it all the way up over the boot and just kind of drape it over top like that. And that will expose the two hex nuts right there that you have to remove. Okay, using your uh, seven millimeter socket, we're gonna remove these two bolts. Be very careful when we remove these two bolts because they can easily fall down inside this console area. So I usually check every couple turns when I get close to see if it can be taken out with my fingers. That way I'm grabbing it when I do it the last few turns. And you have to peel the carpet down a little bit to access this one. Just be careful not to tear the carpet. Again, reach in there with both fingers, or both hands. Make sure that doesn't fall. Now once these are removed, we have to remove this trim piece that we call the hockey stick. And you can see it runs all the way down the length of the side of the console, and it actually clips in with two metal spring clips that go into the glove box trim side there. So what you wanna do first is you wanna just very carefully pull down Pull the carpet out of the way and get the trim piece out of there. Be careful not to put too much pressure on it. And then you want to just pull down and away and it'll pop right out and work it out of the little groove in both the carpet. And you see it has a groove running all the way through there and that tucks inside that center console and then the back side of it tucks over top covers up the carpet and we'll show in detail how to put that back on when we're ready once these bolts are removed you're ready to just lift up carefully on the console starting with the back and watch this little section here you just want to lift that up and get that over the lip there just by pulling straight up and you kind of want to hold this thing and the way it comes out is more of a tilt up and pull straight back. And you want to hold it in, you can hear it popping. And you just want to work yourself up. You don't want to grab on this and just yank it up. You actually want to lift up, put your thumb against the console, and you just want to carefully snap the little connectors away. And it'll work itself up. Remember, if you put the car in fourth gear, you'll have the shift knob shaft pointing back. You can pull the boot up and it makes it a lot easier to pull the thing out. And once you get it worked up, you slowly pull it up out of the way, just enough to get your hands up behind here. And there's a little switch for your hazard light that just has a push-in button that you just pull it out. So I take my fingers like this, I reach in behind me, and you can feel the little tab. And if you, this one's actually on the bottom, you just push in the tab and you pull it out. And I'll show you when we pull it out of the way. If you have a 2LT or a 3LT model, this is a 1LT, so it does not have heat, uh, uh, heated seats. And those options would be two buttons right here and right here. So you would just do the same thing. You'd reach back behind here, and there's a little push-in tab. You just push in the tab and pull both of the switches out. Very simple. And they would be located right here and right here. You pull it back. Once you have the hazard button out, you just pull it back just a little bit more. Don't try to force it. Because you'll also notice that if you look in right here, that you have a cigarette lighter connector that's inside the ashtray. And what you want to do with that is, on the bottom side of it is a little tab, or on the side. On this one, actually, it's on the left side. You just take a little Allen wrench or small screwdriver 
or a little nail or anything and you push in that tab and you just pull this out. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the 15 Torx that we used and I actually put my hand up underneath the console. If you can see where I'm doing that and I just push in that button and it pulls right out. And see that's the little tab you push in right there, right inside that little access window that's right there. Once those are pulled out, you should have enough play. Just be careful, don't let the e-brake boot scratch the console. I go ahead and lower the boot down, get it out of the way. You can actually even lower the e-brake down just a little. And then what you want to do is very, very carefully and slowly, you want to just lift the console up, rotate it around, We'll actually pull the e-brake up a little out of the way, and you can actually set it aside. Now see these wires are actually held on with little tape, and all I did was pull up on the tape just to allow the screws to... Now you'll see these things have some different uh, switches. If you have select ride and stuff like that, and you can see the actual tr uh, traction handling, active handling has a switch, but see there's enough tethered wire here where you don't have to disconnect that stuff. Same thing with the other things that are in here. If you're very careful, you can just move it around. Now on some of the early models that had the little select ride there, you may have to disconnect those and they're easy too. They're just uh, push-in type connectors. And what you do is just reach up underneath there and pull. But on most C6s, there is enough wire. Just be careful, especially this wire going in here. There's not much there, but there's just enough to flip it up around and just rest it, just like that. The only work we're gonna be doing is right here on the shifter. Okay, now we're ready to get the uh, boot off. And this is another uh, area where there have been some variances from year to year. In the earlier C6s, like 05 through 07, there was a foam pad, rubber pad, that looked like this. You probably noticed on your car that stretched over these little tabs front to back there, and you just pull them off and you lift it up. I believe in maybe 08 or 09, they went away from that to this rubber pad, which basically went on the same way in the little tabs, and then you just lift it up over the shaft. Now this unit cannot be used with the MGW shifter without cutting this area away because our shifter is designed completely different. So um, this is something where you can just decide to leave it off if you want to keep it intact, if you want to return the car to stock or if you want to do some modifications. It's really not needed. Uh, it, it insulates a little bit, but it's, it's not really enough to be too worried about not using it. Um, this pad, however, on the earlier models, you can use because you can just trim with a razor blade out enough to get around the MGW shifter. You see this one was actually off of an 07 Z06 we did an install this morning on, and the factory actually was torn, so he decided not to even use it. Okay, if you remember, we put the car in fourth gear just to get the console off. We're going to go ahead and pop it back up into neutral. Make sure it's in neutral. And using the 10 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove these four hex nuts that hold the rubber dust boot down. Okay, and once you get those four hex nuts removed, you just want to lift the rubber boot up off of the shifter and set this aside. We are going to reuse this boot, but we'll have to do a modification. We'll show you how to do that as well. And that exposes the factory shifter. Okay, now we're ready to remove the factory shifter using the same 10 millimeter socket. Just remove the four hex bolts. And just be really careful when you get close to getting them completely unscrewed. Don't let them fall off and go into the tunnel because it's kind of hard to get those out. You need a magnetic tool to retrieve them. Okay, once it's uh, the four bolts are removed from the shifter, you just want to pull straight up on it and you'll pull the factory shifter right out. Make sure this pin comes out with it. And then uh, you just want to pull off the little thin gasket. 